Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to watch Dr. Stone Season 3, Episode 14 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this anime really are. Hmm. I disagree completely. Speculate. Keep going. I want the Soyuz guy to be outed so bad. What if he's a mad genius who stuck around Senku just to observe the enemy and then he actually orchestrated this entire thing? Uh, kind of like that Jar Jar Brinks is a Sith Lord theory. Whoa. <laughs> I thought it was him swimming up at first and not the girl, then it was the girl, then it is him, and he's trying to kill the other creepy dude. Okay? That is true, which is why if there's photos taken of political figures, they're usually facing each other, or if they're like shaking hands, they'll be both facing the camera. If they're both facing the same direction, then that does signify that they're more unified, but if they are across from each other, facing each other like this, then that is a opposition. You can observe this in everyday life as well. If you're looking at the photos of you and your friends, all of you are facing the camera, which is like always a coincidence. But then the other time too is if you have a group of people in a photo and you notice that someone is not looking at the camera lens, looking at another person, them two don't like each other. <laughs> There's definitely something going on there. Just Eye contact in general is just very, very key for so many things about humans. I think every guy knows this trick. And, uh, well, okay, first of all, calling it the manipulation techniques, number two, bold, but I like it. Uh, th this is something that I'm almost certain every guy's done at least once. It's where you ask a girl for her number and to make sure it's real, you read back the number that she gave you, but you purposely mess up two of the digits, and if she corrects you to the same number that it was that she initially provided, it's probably her real number. However, if you read her back the wrong number on purpose, and she tells you, nope, that's correct, you got it, take the hint, she ain't interested. <laughs> That is a great negotiating strategy because the person who says no feels like they're in charge and uh, it, it, it doesn't immediately sound what you want to do. However, if you're negotiating with somebody for a salary increase, like a raise, or for a car cost or really just negotiating just you know in general for even non-monetary things you want the person that you want something from they d gotta say no because then they feel like they're in charge of the flow of the conversation we, in reality they're not at all but again manipulation techniques negotiation techniques they're very similar and how you do that is you ask questions such as would it be wrong if blank and then just w whatever you want from them is like uh would it be wrong for me to request a 10% raise, right? Then no, it wouldn't be wrong. However, we can't afford it. Whatever they say after that, you keep getting them to say no until you guys agree on something. And what I mean is don't, don't, don't just take no for an answer. But when you present somebody with the opportunity to feel like they're solving your problem for you, they're a lot more willing to get that done. So the other way of phrasing that question would be... Uh, how would you structure a raise? I mean, ask a how question. Avoid yes or no, and all negotiation is emotional-based. 
I know that sounds weird, but I do truly believe that uh, Chris Voss from the Black Swan Group is also just incredible for these things. It absolutely works, but you want them to say no. And it's, would it be wrong if blank? Or um, is it unreasonable for me to request whatever it is you're about to request? Uh, because eventually you want to get the person that you're negotiating with to help you solve your problem. And what Gen is saying is absolutely correct. This, this will work. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have the best rest of your day.